Welcome to the Farm Truck and Asian YouTube channel. Where it is what it isn't. I'm out here with Ryan for the purpose of taking new photos of the new setup you got going yep. on, right? What have you guys done that's different from the turbo setup you had in the red car? You know, when I got this car, I don't know, six, seven years, eight years ago, this car was a purpose-built 10.5 car. And so being that it was a purpose-built 10.5 car, it had the motor really far forward in the chassis. That's good for 10.5 stuff. You want 57, 58% on the nose. Some guys are running even a little bit heavier. And that's not what you want for the street. And we knew it going into it. I was always able to make it work. We manipulated it. We moved the turbos back behind the motor instead of in front of the motor. And that gave us the, a, a better weight percentage front to back than what would, normal cars would have with the motor so far forward. So we made it work, right? We, did, we were decently successful. But I always said, man, if I get a brake, I want to move the motor back in the car. So we had a break after we did all of our crazy Nebraska filming and all that type of stuff. And I knew we had three or four months there. And I said, you know what? I called my buddy Ryan at RK and I said, hey, let's chop this thing up and move the motor. I wanted to go 12 inches back. Set the motor back by me because I know that's going to create a more 50-50 when it comes to, you know, like a 50-50 weight percentage. Well. And we could only go, I think we went nine and a half inches. And the reason why is because it got into um where my feet would sit in the car so we moved it back nine and a half inches while i was there i had the opportunity to sell both the 481 x's that i had and you guys are going to get to see those run soon because one of our buddies bought those and i wanted to get into a hemi platform so called up the guys at proline got a uh, 564 cubic inch hemi had been talking with procharger for the last couple of years if you guys have you know the you guys that pay attention to my youtube know that i put a procharger on the gray car back and it was a lot of people don't know this but that was all the way back in um December of 2019. So was it turbo or pro charger when you revealed it at PRI? It, it, it was twin turbo 481X. Right about when we revealed it, about a month later, here comes the weight rules to MPK. Well, I just won the championship with the other car. <laughs> Here's another 100 pounds for me. Yeah. Before you know it, there was a four, three or 400 pound split between my heavy twin turbo setup with the tire that I wanted to run with a pro charge combination. And I was already breaking rear ends all the time, breaking transmissions. In my opinion, it's unsafe to run cars that heavy. I said, you know what? Now's the best time. I'm already chopping the car up. Yeah. Let's make a pro charger fit this thing. It helps having both cars kind of run similar setups, it right? It is. So my initial thing was, Okay, I'm putting a Hemi in a, in a Pro Charger in the gray car. That's the way I'm going to run that one. I'm going to run 481Xs in this one. You know, we run the guts out of this thing, and we did for a long time, and the 481 was a, was a badass piece. But the problem was sharing parts. If I wanted to be competitive and I wanted to not miss races and all that, I really need, you know, you, you, as much as we race, as many shows as we're on, as much as we go street, as much as we go street stuff, as much as we go to racetracks and everything, and you need spares for spares, you know? Yeah, that's and, and all of a sudden it just made more economic sense. I've done well with the twin turbo setup. I want to do something different. I mean, oh, I was almost, well, you've done very this, well. I, I was almost bored <laughs> yeah. with it. I mean, you okay. know, we just, yeah, we, yeah. We, 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 we challenged ourselves quite a bit. And there's a lot of guys that pushed us, you know, chief pushed us on the street to be better. And I think we all kind of grew, we all kind of got faster as a group when we did that. And then there's MPK stuff, you know, I mean, if it, it you know seemed like i had a new rival every year yeah and javi needed more to do and javi obviously. needs more to do he actually this combination is less maintenance <laughs> oh no javi so javi has more to do so he's gonna have a lot more free time now i did it for him basically yeah yeah but but hey it shakes a little more so we joke because we're like put loctite on everything and go go over the bolts <laughs> everywhere yeah, yeah we literally lock tight the doors on that sometimes <laughs> that'd be hilarious if you did <laughs> bolts rattle everywhere on that thing it's just um it's just it's like riding a bolt it's totally different no i i love the combination i like that it's different we're getting a handle on it i think pretty good i don't have we were just saying i don't have that arsenal that crazy arsenal of tunes that I had for my twin turbo setup to right. where we go to you Okima. Ran that for a long time, so you kind of knew where to put it. 200 different tunes for that room. Yeah. And, and I have nothing. Yeah. And that's why I'm here today. So you're here kind of developing a baseline. You're, yes. you're competing out there. You don't yeah. really have time to start from the ground up. That's exactly right. We don't. Yeah. I mean, listen, I we, we talked about this and it was a very calculated decision, but the, when it comes down to it, we knew this could be a struggling season for the for us. Right. Because this is a new combination and we weren't going to get a lot of test time because we barely got the car done and we and we took the chance. First hit today was pretty good. Uh, might be too hot for the road tonight okay. that we're going to be racing on. So we're going to try to slow it down a bit. We'll see what happens. OG Outlaw Show is filming here again. Yes. And we're back at yes. Okima, I back guess, at right? Okima. Yes. So same road. Are we moving the road? Or? Well, okay. So, you know, things change. Permits change. Uh, ideas change. Blah, blah, blah. But right now, we're back to filming 10 episodes of the 405 Show. We've got 
the first two were at Okima, which is the original road that we always raced on. And we could go fast there. Right. And that was a known thing. A lot of people didn't want to come race us there because we knew the road and we knew how to go fast. But none, none of us have been on it in two years. <laughs> yeah. And it's dirty, it's dusty, the real, the rubber's pulling up, and no, literally there has been zero drag races on that thing for two years. But yeah. it's cool to have the OGs back, you know, in the yeah. four or five races. Yeah. You know, I'm sure it wasn't easy when you guys were gone for weeks and months at a time. It was difficult. You know? And I, I, you know, COVID changed a lot of things for a lot of us. Yeah. Who would have thought that COVID was going to make us film in Nebraska for a year? <laughs> it didn't make sense, yeah. you know? But yeah. no, it's a good feeling to be back. It just reminds me of what we used to do two years ago. Yeah. Sean's out here, Dave's out here, yeah. you know, and, and we're all testing. And, and everybody's doing the same thing. And, and people have been beating this track up all week. You know, I know yeah. Chief was here last night. Uh, Damon was here the night before. Yeah, I think Lutz was out here too. Lutz yeah. was out here too, yeah. So everybody's been out here trying to get their baselines, trying to get their head wrapped around the game. And it's going to show tonight who's got it, who doesn't.